Welcome to Vanderpump Robs, a podcast about Hollywood. Today, I've got a very special guest, a returning guest, four years later, maybe? Uh, the host of Red know. Flags Everywhere, it's James Arthur M. Hey, James. Hi, Rob. I, a pleasure to be back. A pleasure to be back. I feel like it's been, <laughs> maybe it's my fault that I haven't been back here in so long because <laughs> I think most of my reaction to, I think it was, it was, was it season three, episode one? That was the last time I it was either that or season two. It's all behind it the was, paywall now, it, anyway. It, so don't worry. Sure, okay, so it was very. It was like definitely. It was like a smack dab season premiere. Like shit's already happening, right? Ugh. And I think most of the time I was just like, Rob, I can't believe you made me watch this show. And yeah, so I think maybe you were like, maybe you no. Know, but I'm down. I'm glad to be here. It, and it was good. It was good to come back and sort of catch up with like old friends who I hadn't seen because this has been like six or seven years of stuff has happened in these people's lives. So it's very yeah. interesting to see their lives still somewhat messy. <laughs> but some people have babies, so that's interesting. Yeah. That's very and interesting. the babies are messy too. You messy know? babies, it's messy, messy babies. I. You know, we'll talk about it in a second, but I, I think now is the perfect time for you to come on with your new podcast, Red Flags Everywhere. But I have to know, because you had been away for a little bit from L.A., yeah, and then you, me, and Mackenzie, uh, former guest of the show, you know, one of our good friends, we all went out Hello. to dinner, yes, and it was great, and... Uh, your friend was working at the restaurant and was like, oh God, they tried to get me on that show once. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like they are like heavily, I mean, it was a very cute actor friend of mine went to acting school together and uh, yeah, they were trying to like recruit, he is working in the industry, he would yeah. have been really great, but I think it's a certain kind of of person that's like you know i'm not here to judge at all but i think it's sure. a certain type of person that is willing to go on this i actually had a note when i was watching this it was like you know what is lisa vanderpump's uh interview process when she's interviewing <laughs> folks it's like do you have any unresolved trauma do yeah. you like you know i uh, i uh, have unhealthy ways of <laughs> uh dealing with your trauma and you cute come on over that's yeah. what i think must be in and, that process. and you, you refuse to button every button on your shirt. Oh, or maybe no. only one button. Just one. On Who's got the time? Yeah. You're too busy throwing drinks and it's so sleeping true. with different people. And oh. uh, yeah. Well, well, before we talk about the meat of today's episode, please give our listeners, you know, the quick elevator pitch for Red Flags Everywhere, your new podcast. Yes. So uh, Red Flags Everywhere, uh, it came out of my own sort of recent hurt and pain. 2023 was really a rough year for me. Uh, a lot of people had a really bad 2020. Mine wasn't as bad. I know a lot of people died, but um, mine wasn't as bad. But 2023, it broke me. I had two back-to-back mm. -back, uh, failed relationships that could have been worthy of its own reality TV show. And the first one that ended, I had unhealthy ways of dealing with it. I would have been perfect for, for, uh, for Lisa's show. Um, <laughs> but... As I was coming out of this hurt, a friend of mine was saying, you know, when it comes to relationships, James, like you're so smart about so many things. When it comes to relationships, you're a ding dong. And I was like, you're absolutely right. And, you know, I had my podcast, Minority Corner, which was about, you know, we ran for seven years, intersectionality about, you know, all things involving race, sexuality, gender, through history, pop culture, news, all that. And I became like an expert around issues around social justice and looking at things through that lens, um, whether it's like, you know, pop culture, news, history, whatever. And I was like, okay, if I'm hurting and making dumb choices time after time after time, never had a one-year relationship, never had an anniversary, I've had 14 exes. And so I'm like, okay, I know if I'm hurting and making dumb choices, there has to be other people. And so basically I'm the Taylor Swift of podcasting. Uh, oh. where I <laughs> now I understand. That's now. pretty much what it is. Uh, and so I decided it was like, you know what I do well is, is podcasting. So basically red flags everywhere. It's me. I'm a failed relationship expert, basically on a journey to end unhealthy, you know, patterns and relationships. And we have experts, non-experts alike. Uh, and we're all on this journey ultimately to help folks you know, I uh, really understand how to have loving relationships that really ultimately 
want you all walking away with knowing your best loving version of yourself. So we've had a lot of great episodes. We've done ones of like how to heal through breakups, attachment mm. styles. Do you know your attachment style, Rob? It's a game changer. I don't. You got to uh, listen to the episode. It's a I'm game I'm happy changer. to learn. Oh, is that the one with Mackenzie? She is on that one. Yes, Mackenzie's yes. on that one. Okay, I see. It's it's in the queue. So it's that's a great. it's it, when learning. If you don't know your attachment style, folks, like it is a relationship game changer. And actually, when I was watching this episode, I was thinking about what attachment styles some of these folks have, so we can like talk what, about what that. What are some examples of attachment styles? Yeah, so like, attachment theory basically comes down to um like how it all comes up in terms of like how. It all goes back to childhood, right? And it's uh-huh. about how we essentially... It always does. <laughs> it really does. And how we got and received love and had our needs either met or not met. And so sometimes that can re- evolve in a secure attachment style where you f- are very secure in yourself. But a lot of times it results into sort of an insecure attachment, which can then result into anxious attachment where you're constantly needing that you know, reassurance and you know that need or avoidant, where you're like, nobody else can get my needs met, so I'm going to push you away. And so it results mm. in like how we handle conflict, right? So like I would even say, I was thinking Sandoval in particular, definitely <laughs> has an insecure attachment. And so in his cheating... It's either it's it's one of two things, right? Because I've only seen this one. I, I've only seen these two episodes, right? And so sure. his it's definitely an insecure t- attachment style. But it's either he's cheating because he feels sort of anxious and that his needs are not getting met, so he's going somewhere else to meet them, or it's sort of self sabotaging and that he's scared that this could work out and so he's avoiding it right so mm. game changer if i could just go in and talk to the kids at at, at, at vanderpumps and and talk to them about what their attachment styles are then we'd have a different show we definitely have a different well, show i can't wait for season two of red flags everywhere where you just talk to all of reality uh, pretty much the whole bravo universe i think <laughs> Yeah, uh, I got to benefit from being gotta, on the podcast. I got to get to Andy Cohen. I will see one of the shows that we've done too. I thought was really, like, I really enjoyed doing. We did an episode called it. My, am I the villain? Cause I do want to be like a very honest of like, yeah, I don't want to just rag on like my exes and shit and stuff. Sure. That they've done. We want to take an honest look. Listen, I have cheated on. I've been cheated on. I've also cheated, right? Like, we've all sort of, you know, been there. I broke up with someone on Christmas Eve. Like, uh, well, Christmas morning, actually. Never a good time to break up with somebody. But I've also been, like, had my heart ripped out, right? So it's interesting because you can watch the show and it can be so quick to be like, oh, God, they're so messy and dramatic. And it's like, look at your own life. The only difference is that their drama just is constantly happening i couldn't live like this i couldn't know how they do it no like my drama happens like every couple of years but it's not in that same circle so i have to imagine there's like some compartmentalization like i'm going to work and my work involves uh fighting with people or drama right right? but but when we're not filming i get to do whatever i want you don't get to Actually, Rob, because you hear about there were so many different moments in this episode where they're like, there was a lot of towel not show because all this there's other drama that's happening when the cameras aren't rolling right yes so, like that's actually a very good point point. and and just to to back up one moment just so the audience knows i tasked james with watching <laughs> hashtag scandal and the decade of rumors and lies lies special that came out yeah and so the the what you may not know james i mean it maybe you do but uh the hashtag scandal was like a we're picking cameras back up because this news dropped like they had thought they had shot the season yeah right like yeah. Th- they were done with season 10 and then the news broke like four episodes into season 10 airing and so they picked up i think it might have even been like three months after they were done <sighs> And so, like, the way this starts with them, like, in the house and, like, I don't want to hear about fucking Raquel. Yeah. You know, uh, that is, like, this has been smoldering for a bit, you know. I have uh, to say thank you because I've heard from, on the experts. I like to think I have my finger on the pulse of, you know, pop culture. But the whole mm-hmm. entire Housewives world and va- this world, like, it's it's kind of foreign to me. I know very peripheral information. But this was huge. You couldn't get away from this. And so I appreciate it, Rob, because now I know what the hell everyone is talking about. Like, now I'm in the know. I tell so you. I'm ready I'll for tell the cocktail you, parties. 
Yeah, you can you can you can stand your own when people are like, "Do you watch Vanderpump Rules?" No, but I was assigned homework yes. about Vanderpump. Well, now I have something new because for the longest time I was just writing on that, like, "Oh, I saw this one episode and Sheena's my girl. I don't care what y'all have to say." And people would side eye me because back then, mm-hmm. like, people did not really care for Sheena. But now Sheena, she's the hero. Sheena is one of the most adjusted folks on. The sh- on, on the show she's got a kid i a think husband. so too she everyone looked at her like she's crazy like where's stas stasi ain't even here right she yeah, got Stassi got fired yes Stassi sheena's got still fired. here i put my money yes. on the right person i'm a good judge of character the fans of the show that are mm-hmm. diehards and they go to the message boards they go to reddit they go to instagram and they leave their you know maybe less than nice comments about people they've developed what they think the person is Mm -hmm. and roll with that season to season to season. Right. Mm -hmm. So the people who dislike Sheena dislike Sheena, like for example. Right. Right. And then they can be like, well, look back at season three when she did this and then look back at season eight when she did this. And that totally solves uh, my argument for why I don't trust her in season 10 doing Mm -hmm. this. Right. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I feel like in relationships, you can always find the thing that uh, proves the point you're trying to make. I think it's just in human nature. It's I uh, I also do uh, DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion, mm-hmm. and we do workshops on bias. And one of the type of bias is confirmation bias. And so yes. really what it is, it's just confirmation bias. You already have a preconceived notion and idea and thought. And it's even sometimes like, you know, us as human beings, we're making, there's so much information that our brains are trying to process at one time. And so we make these quick categ- categorizations, right? So, mm-hmm. I mean, even for... For me, I will be honest, like Stasi, like she, she, like her face, I'm just like, I don't like, there's just something about it that's triggering for me, right? So I'm like, I really don't like her, right? But that's a yeah. bias that I have. And so anything that she does, it just like confirms it for me. If she's not on the show anymore, I'm like, see, I've already found out she's no good. She got fired, right? <laughs> and so what we have to do is sort of slow down and check when we have this sort of guttural reaction and just sort of sort of like sit with it. And so I think it's like even when we're in relationships, because I say this on my podcast all the time and a friend of mine told me, you have to stop saying it. I don't care. This is my brand. We are walking bags of meat trauma. That's just what we are. Mm-hmm. Like we, no mm-hmm. one gets out of this life game without trauma. And I really believe that it's our job to heal those traumas. Traumas get passed down. Um, and this show is so riddled with people who have so much just relationship trauma. They're so hurt. It's literally a show about hurt people hurt people. And they mm-hmm. deal with it in the most unhealthy ways. I couldn't, I was like, I was like, oh, we're taking another drink. Oh, we're having another drink. Every scene in that mm-hmm. episode, they were taking a drink to heal. And let me tell you, as someone who turned to drinking to try to numb my hurt and my pain, all that ended up happening is I ended up in, a, in an even worse relationship that ruined me and took me to a very dark place. So I uh, yeah, you, you can't <laughs> force the forget. You, you can't know. get into therapy now because most yeah. people wait before it's too late. That's what these people need. They all just need therapy. They should have a Dr. Drew spinoff. I don't know if he's can- I don't know if he's canceled yet, but someone like that. Hey, sometimes <laughs> when you you want to reach for a drink, what you need is a drink of I'm sorry. Yes, anyway, that was my- <laughs> there, that is a good um, Dr. Drew. Uh, thank. Wait, I did Dr. Phil. But, oh, we don't need him. He's hey, my Dr. Phil canceled. is a good Dr. Drew. That? Um, <laughs> That's kind of like me. Like my uh, share is actually John Travolta. Like, <laughs> I, I don't, I can't order a pizza. Saturday, I, well, I gotta fix my hair. And is that John Travolta or share? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Isn't that wild? Okay. Let's... <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about some of these characters. Yeah. Now, is there a, the big, you talked about Sandoval a little bit and his like attachment style, but it, wh- what was the big thing that jumped out at you after watching these things? You know, it was so interesting. The biggest thing, and I'm kind of mad because Lisa Vanderpump said this in the season 11, sort of like, here's all the shit you didn't oh, see and here's what's coming up. Rumors. Yes. Yeah. So my whole entire theme that like was running through here, especially because like I, to 
Ariana and Rachel Raquel. Are they the same person? I'm confused. Yeah, she goes by Raquel. Well, she goes, her real name is Rachel and she's taken it back. She went by Raquel when she started the show. And now she's like, you know what? Raquel was this woman on Vanderpump Rules. Now I'm Rachel. Wow, what a journey. Yeah. And who oh. says there isn't character development on these things? And who says yeah, people so can't? True. But I think that also goes to my point is that people don't really change that much unless they do the work right yes to just go from rachel raquel like what is that that's not that big of a difference so unless you actually like do the therapeutic work or do you know aa or whatever it is to really get to the root cause of why someone is is doing that behavior so take you know a uh, uh, sandoval um you know he uh, like the like the whole entire thing with these with all his track record, it's like you lose him how you find him. And I'm so mad because Lisa says that in episode eleven. It's like <laughs> season. 11. I was like, girl, that was my line. I was gonna come home yeah. and, and surprise everybody with like my wisdom, but you lose him how you find him. And so Ariana, girl, like that should have been a red flag and something in the back of your head, thinking that that could happen, unless you get to the root of why he is doing it. If I'm her. I immediately take him and we go into couples therapy. Again, a lot of times people will go into couples therapy. It's already too late. Get into it Mm -hmm. now. If you're in a relationship and it's going well, great. Get into therapy now. Most people wait for it's too late. Like that way you're doing maintenance on the relationship and not trying to fix something that is so far gone. So with Sandoval, clearly there is something within inside of himself that is hurting honestly you know there's a a new thing a lot of times we we always look at people more like god what's wrong with them the real question that we have to ask and i got this from oprah uh she has a whole entire book about this and it's called what happened to them something Mm. happened to him you know there is something that is is hurting you know i could you know he is you know he's getting this attention from you know people that maybe he never really felt Again, there's an insecurity that is getting filled um, or yeah. fear. He's like, oh, this is going really well. Um, and and I, I can't, I'm, I'm afraid of what's going to happen. Um, and it's also a great example is just like, be open and honest. If you're not feeling a relationship or things have changed, tell your partner. And for Ariana, the red flag is when he told you he didn't want to be in a relationship with you. And sometimes that's really hard for us to hear. I've been there. When you are finding yourself begging someone to be there with you, that is a huge wake up call uh, to you. And we, a lot of times you see in in this show and with these relationships where it's Ariana, Sandoval, all of them, there's an unmet need within themselves and they are continuously looking at these relationships to fulfill them. And that is a self sabotaging you know, uh, a disaster that's going to happen and you've been seeing it unfold for 10 seasons. Yeah, I, I just to echo what you're saying, you know, throughout the seasons of Vanderpump Rules, when you look at Tom Sandoval specifically, like the first couple of seasons, he's in a rock band and he's playing guitar and he's wearing his white studded belts and, you know, the, he wants to be performing on stage there. A couple seasons later, he's in like a indie sleaze type, you know, pop group uh, that he does a song with like this weird guy who passed away, but was like queuing on. Um, and Ooh. then, yeah, it was, it, Ooh, it yes. was that's um, a, that's also a red flag than yeah. Ariana. If your man is hanging out with some queuing on person yeah. and yeah. he's, it is a chameleon. It looks like he doesn't really know himself. Exactly. But he wants to perform, right? Yes. He wants to have like fame. He's a model. He's, he's done acting, right? I understand like the Hollywood machine too, yeah. right? You know, you have to have like, you have to be doing three things to succeed in one thing, mm-hmm. right? If you're mm-hmm. a writer, you have to have a sub stack and you have to write a book and you have to have a podcast, right? If you're an actor, you have to be a model. You have to have this many Instagram followers, right? Whatever the era is, you have to be doing multiple things to get attention. But where he got his fame was being on Vanderpump Rules. Mm -hmm. And that was not his goal. I I think that was what he thought was going to be the stepping stone to something else. And he's hurting because he's now... I think he says he's 40. I think he's 42. And uh, he's not where he thought he would be. This is a theory. And now his side gig is being the lead in a cover band, like a 
like a like a wedding band, which yeah. is fun, but like that was that the, the original rock band that yeah. he wanted to be in? Yeah, no. It's oh, and you know it's interesting because they kept showing so many clips, and you're saying like it's you see someone who has been trying to find themselves. So, he's had so many different like looks, and I would say the other red flag with Sandoval, uh, if I like, is that mustache. I'm sorry. <laughs> Never trust a man in a mustache. And I'm sorry, you were wearing a mustache. Like, what happened to you? Like, what happened to you is what I want to know. Puns, <laughs> p- p- mustaches are for two people, villains and porn stars. Sometimes they're one in the same. And that you have to weird. ask yourself. And that's a good, there's a reason why in the movie we're trying to warn y'all, like when they're twirling the mustache. Yeah, like, this exactly. is, oh, that was a red flag right there. Um, but also, too, it's like something that was happening for me, I think, it's. I'm not sure what I'm doing with the show, and I'm sure a lot of people. I think we're so quick in society to like take sides, and we're upset with this person. Yeah. I mean, even like people are like they rated the restaurant one star. It just. I, it's just so interesting that people are so reactionary with their their pitchforks, and it's like these are all human beings. Everyone's trying to do the best that they can. They're not doing. And not everyone's doing that. You know, like the best job. I will say coming back to Sandoval is that what I noticed, you said that he was a performer and that's so interesting because I got the sense that he, and then I, I, I got the sense that he was responding the way that he felt like he was supposed to be responding. Yes. The tears. Because even in like the breakup conversations, right? The tears didn't feel as authentic. And I don't, and I don't know what's going on with him or whatnot, you know, but I feel there's this performer inside of him um, where right now the vibe it's getting, giving off is sociopath. And I don't want to throw him, I I don't want to throw him in that category, but his behavior is also leading to that where it seems like he's like, I should be sad and I'm going to show you I'm sad and I'm, you know, crying and, maybe those emotions were real a couple of months ago, but now they're filming and so they're not there and he's feeling like he needs to push it. And so then it just goes back to this poor 40, 42 year old man (laughs) is free. He doesn't know who he is. And of course, because he's been filming his, his life. He probably, I couldn't even imagine because it's like when you're doing the show, you're playing a heightened version of yourself, at least as an actor, even if I'm doing Days of Our Lives and I'm playing this character every day, there's still a separation, right? But with this, yep. like we were even saying that like Sheena had a fight with Rachel Raquel, even she doesn't know who she is, right? Yep. Had an off-camera fight, like the drama doesn't stop. It's constantly yep. going because then they have something to talk about when they come back with their, fr- you know, so it's like this constant. So then you're like, who the fuck am I? I'm 40 yeah, years Tom old. Sandoval has been playing the part of who he thinks Tom Sandoval should be, yeah. not being an authentic version of himself, yeah. um, which is probably a slippery slope when you're on a reality show like this. I understand the hurt Ariana feels from this, right? Mm-hmm. That she yes. didn't cheat on him. Right. So it is easier to like want to empathize with her more than empathize with, uh, with Tom. Now... Uh, could I theorize why Tom did this? Yeah, you and I had a conversation just moments ago about like all the reasons why it could have happened. Yeah. On the Ariana side, though, you hit the nail on the head when you say like when someone says they don't want to be with you, you got to listen. Like when yeah. someone tells you who they are, shows you who they are, believe recognize them, it. and believe I, them. Yeah. Maya Angelou says when show, someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. And I think yes. oftentimes in relationships we don't and i think that's something that i've noticed and i did this too like i was in my last relationship it was just like they kept showing me who they were but i kept like oh no this is just my fear and my my doubts it was like this was we have to get good at trusting our heart and our gut and it feels like she was just ignoring probably what was really there just because and this goes for like a lot of people in life and on this show but like just because you want something to be a certain way yeah you do all the steps, you do everything you're, quote, supposed to do, it still may not happen. Yeah. And you have to just understand that. The thing, the red flag, if we get back to this theme of red flags yeah. with Ariana, though, because there's like, okay, so she breaks up, they break up. A couple weeks later, she's dating a new man, mm-hmm. which I feel like is a red flag. Yep. He lives on the East Coast. She lives on the West Coast. I feel like that quick of a turnaround, 
a red flag. Yeah. She gets a book deal. Her and Tom had put out a cocktail book years ago called um, Fancy AF Cocktails. Okay. Something like that. And then she puts out a cocktail book while in a relationship with this guy, not this new guy, single AF cocktail. Okay. All right. So part of me is like, I get it. Branding, marketing, you got a book deal, go with the book deal. But that on top of like this quick turnaround relationship feels like maybe you need some time to yourself. Well, uh, yeah, and that that she's she's still her the she's still in recovery with those sort yeah. of moments and things like that. Like she hasn't fully um again get into the roots of it. Yeah. One thing that I didn't see from Ariana um is 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 uh, and I I don't want to say this in a in a in a hurtful way, but I think she's stuck in the victimhood of what happened to her. Um, mm-hmm. there's nothing that I see that she's owning up to any of the things that like oh gosh like I could have gotten out of this sooner. It's just I think there's there is. And I get when you first when this happens, you throw yourself the the biggest pity party you ever could have absolutely dive into that. But to like sort of stay in there. Um, And so what I also see is because fast forward to whatever is coming up in this next season, they're still living together in the same house. So she's actually not interested in fully healing and moving on from this. Like, I think she's actually still attached to him and still. I mean, writing this book, dating this other guy, like she is not healed and recovered from this at all. And is just doing, adding in a new relationship, uh, even, you know, doing, add, getting this book, which is kind of like a, a slap to him, is is just band-aids, is band-aids. And she hasn't done like the surgery work. Um, yeah. So I, I would say to this guy that's dating her, this is a red flag. <laughs> She's not over her ex. This is a, this is going nowhere. Now, I would not expect for you to know what I'm about to tell you, but I think it'll at least make you feel better about Ariana in this situation. Yes. She tried to buy out the house from Santa Claus. Okay. And he said no. Mm. And she just, as of like a few days ago from this recording, has served him legal papers. Oh, okay. So she's She's now at least making the steps. Okay. I do think there was... A significant amount of time yeah. that, like, the papers that, could have been served. But, like, you know, this mm-hmm. is me just theorizing. But I, also, like, he took out a fucking home equity loan on that house to open his bar, mm-hmm. Schwartz and Sandy's. Mm-hmm. Like, you, that should have been a conversation I was going to say, well. that's also a red flag. Was she not involved yeah. in that conversation uh, either of, of that? Like, And once you start getting into, like, you know, hot property and stuff, I get it. It is, you know, business. But I feel like they all, you know got my i couldn't when i break up with somebody or there's a breakup no contact i need at least like two three like i'm blocking you deleting you from everything i i need to not and i think we all learn that sort of stuff from like the first few strong relationships right you like you have a couple of times well god forbid hopefully people learn but like you know we've all probably had that embarrassing moment where you like try to get the person back. You keep trying to talk to them or email them or text them or whatever. And they're like, no, but they're kind of like still having the conversation. Yeah. I think you're right. Like you have to like, you can always talk to someone again later. Yes. But you have to give yourself that like, two weeks, month, whatever it is of no contact. Yes, I'm friends with like my ex that I talked about that I broke up with on, on Christmas. Fast forward a couple years later, we're spending Chris- two back-to-back Christmases together in England with his family. That all worked out. Wow. We're friends, but we had to have that time. And I think he's actually going to even come on the podcast. Like and We're going to talk about yeah. two sides to every story. Let's talk about it. Uh, but it took time because like she is constantly being tr- neither of them can healthily heal from this by living in that same house even if you're not talking to each other it's just you're being reminded you can't yeah. you need to forget about them not constantly be triggered by them uh you're yeah. gonna get out of the house the killer is in the house it's across the way <laughs> get out of the house the mustache is coming from inside of the house God, yeah uh, I, you know what i do like is that he is leaning into what his actual job and persona is. She mentioned that he is now filming some sort of like reality TV series. That is your job, buddy. 
you yeah. are you and you you know this wasn't what you like you're a reality tv person there's so many yep. shows go on traders like go make that oh, money man. be on it <laughs> I want to be on Traders so Damn, bad. Oh my I want to be on that show so bad. So, but this season they didn't bring any just like Joe Schmoes on it. It's all yeah. I just started. It people. doesn't seem like there's very many. No, I looked at the three? entire cast list. Oh really? And I think it's all like famousy type people, and that was it's like, all Michael Jordan's son and Trishel. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I thought was so interesting about the first season. It was you know reality people and uh-huh. you know uh, that was Joe the Schmose. best, and it gave us you gave people like you and I a shot to maybe be on the show. But uh, I actually talked to uh, the casting director of that show, and she said every time she's talking to people, uh, she's constantly like, "Hmm, would this person make a good trader?" Even if she's not in the middle of casting, she's oh. constantly just like, "Who would make a good trader?" That's her mindset. That is. Really uh, intriguing, yeah. quite frankly. Uh, okay, James, I've got three like quick hit red flag situations I want to run by you before we close out today's episode. Let's do it. Um, so we've talked a lot about Sandoval and Ariana. They're going to be on their healing journey in season 11, Good hopefully. Luck. God has uh, blessed them both on their journey. You yeah. all got this. Get into therapy, please, both of you. Please. I- and Please. not like television reality TV no, therapy. Like just not to, that. for yourself. Do whatever the fuck you want on the cameras, but like for yourself. Yeah. Like yeah. as a person who cares for every human being on this planet, because like there's so much hurt. Our job is to heal from this. Like go heal. And go then heal. Be, be messy on camera, that's fine. But your personal life, yourself, go heal. And and not in like a sound bath like no, do or do the work ayahuasca like yeah, go nah, nah, get nah, some nah. real <laughs> shit yeah. done. you can do those things yes on top but of also, it like <laughs> like i actually don't... i liked the little ritual that uh, Kir- was it kirsten the other his first Kristen, Kristen, yes. yeah yeah which i thought that was actually a really beautiful moment of you know some so often people are like oh women don't get along da-da. what a beautiful moment of her to be like hey yeah. been here <laughs> warned you yeah let's do this ritual let's you know i loved it it was like what do you this is actually what i really liked from ariana in that moment like what are you wanting for yourself she's like self-love that warmed my heart so much like because that is yes. what it comes down to you can't look for somebody else to fill what you need to fill it's got to come in from inside of you um and then the exercise of like what do you need to release i didn't see what she wrote i don't think it, that part was that great but going I think we're all a little let down with that scene because Kristen was like such a huge character that got brought back for this 30 second scene mm. and it's like you know what it, it is happens. She's too evolved. Like you can tell yeah. like, the people Kristen who actually have is left like, the person the sh- who's grown the most. Yeah, like, you could tell. She was like, yeah. Oh, let's do this healing in Crystal. She wasn't like, I'ma throw a drink in your face. I told you he was gonna do that. She was like, Hey, I'm sorry, hog, let's do this ritual. Like and I was like, Yeah, damn, she is healed. She is yeah. that's why she's not on the show anymore. She's too boring. Yeah, well, uh, she's got a podcast though, James. So don't Good worry for her. Okay. She's, she's, she's got a little working. bit. It was she's still a little bit like us, where we okay. kind of need to, you know, be on the camera and mic. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, excited. quick, quick ones. Sheena, our girl Sheena. You know, we talk about her, but like she does have what some may call a flaw of like wanting to be friends with everyone. Mm-hmm. And I do think there's a point where like you don't have to hear someone out. If they've hurt people around you more than once, like you don't have to hear them out. But I would love your opinion on like the people pleaser type of person. As a people pleaser, and maybe this is why, I mean, I, you will never get me to say anything bad about Sheena from day one. <laughs> she has been my ride or die on this show. You all like eye rolled at me about her and she to be who's still regularly on the show is the most like healthy put together uh, uh, person. And maybe that's because I am also a recovering uh, people pleaser. But I will say she actually... Same. By the way, she just see saying. right, yeah. and so she actually had a really healthy, mature adult response to Sandoval, where she was like, "You've been my friend for fourteen years." She's so hurt and crying, and da da. There were some moments I'm like, "Why is she crying? It doesn't really happen to her." But okay, whatever. <laughs> uh, we got emotions. She going. did another interview not too long ago. Where was she was crying? Like, People don't understand what this did to me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. 
Yeah, that's why love I her love to death, her. But that's also, why like, I love her because like she came in also to like cheer up Ariana, and she started breaking down in tears more than Ariana was. I was like, "What is going on, Sheena?" And then she's like, "We need to drink." And like, Sheena, what is happening? But I appreciate it because she said, "Sandoval, I can't be your friend. Like, I'm done. Like, I can't yeah. be your friend. I don't trust you." And it was like, see, it was a lesson for Sandoval because Sandoval is a he's a coward. Like, he is a coward. Yes, he couldn't say what he really wanted. He was, you know, trying to be this nice guy and he's you're maybe you're not a nice guy and that's okay you know not everyone's gonna like you that's that's fine lean into it be who you are just be authentic about it um but i thought she was really dope she was like i like you're done and so i don't figure out the question is but she's the dopest version of the show and i will never say anything bad about her she has a baby yeah. and a hot she husband. recognizes she recognizes where to draw the line and yeah. where to like erase the line also, um, Sandoval blocked her baby on Instagram. That was a little, so little, stupid. <laughs> so little stupid. dumb. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what? The other one was just like La La starting beef all the time, but I think that's just part of reality TV. So, James, I'm going to ask you this third one. Yes. James Kennedy, the British bloke on the show. I think he's got. I think he's got some skeletons that will be coming out. Maybe not in season eleven, but probably okay. season twelve. Um, he's a DJ. And okay. Is, does a DJ just that title raise any red flags to you? you this is so great because actually I want to do an episode about jobs that are red flags. Uh-huh. And so I just top of my head a few jobs that are red flags. I'm gonna put a DJ is definitely probably on there. It's just I uh, it's just a wild life, and that is not not if you're trying to look for if you're in your 20s, cute, sure. But you know I'm a man approaching. I'm. 38 not lying and saying i'm 38 like sandoval who's like you know mm-hmm. i'm not i'm mm-hmm. almost 40 but i'm rounding up um i would say dj eh, it's gonna be a red flag um unless they're also in therapy that i will caveat uh-huh. that with any of these jobs i say unless they're also in therapy a nurse unless they're also in therapy i wow. maybe maybe i'm coming from just recent experience but sure. i was i don't know about- there's been a few nurses on the bachelor that uh and, and the Bachelorette, I would say, like uh, both sides, that you're kind of like this is. I thought you would be more empathetic. They Am I using that word correctly? Empath- you are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. They see. They also tend to, in my history, is that they have what I, friends. They were warning me. They like, don't take that nurse. Uh, and I was like, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> uh, they work. The sneakers very, aren't as comfortable as you think. They work long <laughs> hours, and they see a lot of fucked up shit, and I uh, uh, they end up numbing again it comes back to like how do we numb from shit and they see they have a lot of a lot of them have alcohol issues drug abuse issues like nurses be wild and so i would say uh or a reality tv personality of sorts that's (laughs) that's uh that's a those are red flags or if your boss is lisa vanderpump she (laughs) is a red flag it's so interesting because she actually gives such great wisdom and advice but i'm also like you are way too involved into the person lives of your staff they showed a clip from like early and she on. always gives the dudes a pass she too. <laughs> she's like well i'm not gonna and it's like okay and and she said like early on there was like showing a clip that she was like yes and like early on they all were just like sleeping with each other and she's like ye- yelling she's like a team meeting and she's like what am i supposed to do fire you all yes that's yes. exactly what you do that's what you do like it's another i went to another episode maybe you'd be good to have on this because you've seen so much of this happening but you don't shit where you eat you don't nah, shit where you eat nah, and like nah, nah. i like that's what the show is literally the moral of the story don't shit with you eat don't shit where you eat and get into therapy now and james before i moved to new york and then subsequently california uh i was from a small town and that is like just you shit where you eat <laughs> you shit where you you don't have any option it's but to bad. shit where it's you eat right and there yeah it is messy terrible. and that's where the mess Ugh. comes get the cameras rolling and that's yep. uh that's where it yeah. is well james let everyone know again about red flags everywhere and where they can find it before we take off today absolutely red flags everywhere it is wherever you podcast so if you're on spotify uh apple Podcasts, uh wherever it is we're we're sure. right there uh so like subscribe we're on instagram we're doing the tiktok thing i'm trying Ooh. i'm trying to keep up we're on tiktok you you'll see it. clips of uh of us uh come on over here and over even if you're in a strong relationship we've got something for everybody if you're like i don't even want to date that's fine sometimes you're going to hear just like stories of uh, horror stories we 
love. This is why you watch Vanderpump, right? Yes. You love watching shit storms. And so you'll hear about <laughs> some of the shit storms that people have had. It's got something for everybody. And ultimately, uh, I want everybody walking away just being the best loving version of themselves. So red flags everywhere. Join me on this journey and uh, you're going to hear some great stuff. Anything else you'd like to plug? Any of your personal stuff or just uh, red flags? Just that. I mean, I am going to be working on a, a one man show. You're never going to guess what it's called. <gasps> Hmm. Well, why don't we just allow it to be <laughs> announced on Red Flags Everywhere? Oh, well, that's actually and... the name of the show. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's my new brand. I'm writing a book. Uh, see, I'm into it. Like, I guess I am very much like Ariana. Maybe it's like you hate the thing that reminds you of yourself the most. She wrote Ooh. a book. I'm doing a yeah. podcast. I'm doing my own book on it. You burned me. I got you. So maybe I'm not as healed about my last relationship as I thought. Whoa. You're going through the process. James, you're going through the process. You're doing the work. And Just like Ariana. Respect that. Thank yes. you. All right. Exactly. Well, listeners, Go subscribe to Red Flags Everywhere. Do the it. link will be in the show notes. So you can like, while you're listening to me talk right now, you can open the description of this show, click James's link and hit subscribe. You're not going to be disappointed. I'm not going to have anyone on this show that I don't wholeheartedly endorse. And if not, I'll put a caveat at the beginning of the episode. But uh, <laughs> listen to Red Flags Everywhere. And if you would like this episode ad-free as well as bonus episodes or just like what I'm doing and want to support what I'm doing, please head over to the Vanderpump Robs Patreon at patreon.com slash Vanderpump Robs and show your support. If you sign up for a year, you get 10% off. Thank you so much. Thank you, James. Hey. We'll see you next time on Vanderpump Robs. Goodbye. Where was Jax? Wait, Rob, is that who we're talking about? Yeah.